we are starting the live broadcast again for the second time this afternoon the YouTube gremlins are in the system on this windy afternoon in the UK but I am determined to bring you some news and discussion about the new Huawei Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro so the live broadcast will resume in just a moment So we are back with the live broadcast. Hopefully this particular broadcast will progress without any glitches. As I mentioned during the introduction, it seems like there's YouTube gremlins in the system this afternoon. We have got quite severe weather in parts of the UK today, which may be a contributory factor, or it may just be that YouTube don't want me to share my opinion on the Huawei Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro that were just announced this afternoon. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, a big hello to Russ, also to Peter and Robert. Thank you very much for tuning in. For those of you who are re-tuning in on this second attempt at the live broadcast, thank you very much for tuning in again. Uh, hello to Sumu Nath. I saw you first time around in the first live broadcast. Now, I don't want to cover old ground, but I'm going to run through very quickly some of the main specifications of the two new smartphones that were announced today. In fact, there were three. There's a, there's a third version as well. Uh, I don't want my live broadcast to become just full of me reading out specifications, but I am very aware that some of you might not have been able to tune into the live broadcast that Huawei put out. So uh, to cover off the specifications I think is a, a very good thing and the specifications are absolutely amazing. Now I know it's all to do with user experience and how they implement the software but this is a really good spec sheet. So let's start with the slightly larger, very very slightly larger screen, uh, Huawei Mate 10 Pro and I'll also interject with some of the similarities between the two models. So the Mate 10 Pro has got a Kirin 970 octa-core processor, as has the non-pro version. The Mate 10 Pro has also got 8GB of RAM, 64GB or 128GB of storage. You can further expand that storage with a micro SD card, which is really good to hear. Uh, both of them, both of these models are running Google Android version 8 straight out of the box. The Mate 10 Pro has got a 6 inch display in this tall thin 18.9 format ratio which seems to be the trend of late. Uh, 2160 by 1080 resolution so a nice resolution screen. Now Huawei made a big deal of this, no notch cut out the top like on the iPhone 10. Uh, no rounded corners to the screen like on the iPhone 10 and a very symmetrical design so the top and bottom bezels are identical and the more or less bezel-less design on the sides obviously identical when you turn the smartphone over you've got the dual cameras which we'll come back to in a short while but if you draw a line down the center of the phone again the design is very symmetrical they've also put the fingerprint sensor on the Mate 10 Pro round the back so in this position here where your finger naturally goes to to unlock your phone so really fast sort of unlocking um, with regards to the cameras that we've got a dual lens setup and a dual sensor setup and dual uh, image signal processors as well uh, 12 megapixel RGB sensor on one of them and a 20 megapixel monochrome se sensor for the second one f1.6 apertures and Leica lenses so really good optics they partnered with Leica again good move so this should result in some really good photos to keep things running along this was one of the impressive specifications a 4000 milliamp hour battery which will easily give you a full day's use even if you're a power user and up to two days use if you're a light to medium user USB-C charging and super fast charging as well and this is all in a 7.9 millimeter thin smartphone it's really quite impressive uh, HDR10 display around the front and then to round things off they mentioned that we've got water and dust resistance as well. 
It's available in titanium grey, mocha brown, and also midnight blue or pink gold. So four different colours, and it's available mid-November for €799, Euros, which should equate to £699 or thereabouts. Uh, that's for the baseline 64 gigabyte model. And then the Mate 10, so the non-pro version, very, very similar specifications, with the differences being only six gigabytes of RAM instead of eight gigabytes. Also a different format screen, so 16.9 format ratio, which is what we're more used to. It's a standard wide screen. 2560 by 1440 resolution, 730 nit brightness was mentioned on the non-pro version they didn't mention the brightness of the pro and this one's 8.2 millimeters thin so a little tiny bit thicker than the pro and the fingerprint sensor moves around to the front we've also got instead of water and dust resistance we've got spill and dust resistance slightly different color lineup champagne gold black pink gold or mocha brown and this particular one comes in at 699 euros so round about the 529 pounds mark and this one's available late october so a little bit earlier and then last but not least based on the pro version we've also got the porsche design model now this is going to come in a really special finish it looked very very sort of uh svelte looking very very stealthy uh, special packaging as well 256 gigabytes of storage on the Porsche design version that's coming in at 1,395 euros or around about 1,299 UK pounds don't know what the release date on that one is yet but I would imagine that that one's going to be mid-November as well in fact let me just check my press releases uh, it doesn't mention about that particular one I don't want to start my email up again in case it interrupts the stream now something else I also mentioned we we'll touch on this very very quickly and that is the PC mode now you know the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 has got this deck station that you dock it into and it gives you a desktop experience this one uses a single cable and it gives you a desktop like experience no dock required mobile office separate screens you can use your phone screen as a trackpad to control the mouse cursor or you can connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse how cool is that and they also work independently so if you've got something on the big screen and you're also uh, receiving text messages or phone calls they don't show on the big screen they only show on the smartphone screen very very cool I'm just super impressed that is really very very good to be able to pull this off at this price point they also mentioned that they're both AMOLED screens as well. So nice screen technology. I'm just impressed overall. And before I go, I go on to what the highlights are for me, I just want to take a look through the questions and also mention that obviously I have reached out to Huawei to try and get uh, both of these in. Uh, probably not the Porsche model, but certainly the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro. Uh, try and get both of them in to the Geek and Noise Studio so that I can bring you my opinion in this sort of video. It's very, very hard to actually fund this sort of device. Now I have got, you can see on your screen in the background here, um, I have got a GoFundMe campaign running at the moment and somebody has contributed to it, so a big, big thank you. The funds are on their way. I'm running a GoFundMe campaign to actually uh, try and get in either a Note 8 or an iPhone 10. Uh, they're two particular smartphones that I can't actually uh, fund myself. Uh, so I'm looking for a sponsor or a loan device, but they're both very, very difficult for me to get hold of. Samsung Samsung, don't respond to my uh, emails at the moment. And Apple don't send me out loan devices anymore. They stopped that around about four and a half years ago. So that GoFundMe campaign is there if you want to support the channel. You also get a say in which device I cover next. So let's take a look through some of the questions we've got here. We've got a question from Sumu Nath. Do you use the Moto mods? Well, I've only had this for under a week now. We're talking about the Moto Z2 Play. Uh, this is a mod. It's just like a case back, so I'm using that one. I haven't tested the 360 camera yet, but I have been using the JBL Sound Boost 2. 
which has got a little kickstand on it, really beefy speaker. And yes, I will be continuing to use that. Uh, but this is just a review unit, so I've only got it for a couple of weeks. Uh, next question comes in from Danny Johnson. Um, I believe Danny may well have been the contributor to my GoFundMe. If it is you, Danny, a big, big personal thank you from me to you for kicking the funds off in that GoFundMe campaign. Uh, Danny Johnson asks, what do you think of the AI features in the camera being able to determine what you're shooting and helps give you the best picture? Do you think this is this will be a gimmick or useful? I actually think it will be very useful. And the fact that it's on chip, uh, during their demonstration, for those of you who didn't see the demonstration, uh, they were using the smartphone in airplane mode. This was the Mate 10 or Mate 10 Pro. And they were pointing it at various objects. They pointed it at some food, also at some plants and flowers, and then at a little model dog. And the little icon on the screen of the smartphone came up to show what you were actually taking a photo of. So food photography, plant photography, or an animal. And the idea being that it learns and adjusts how the photograph is taken. And I think it's like a, a really good intelligent auto mode that continues learning. And I think that if they have implemented it correctly, it will adjust the tonal quality, uh, possibly the color rendition of the photo. Maybe it will adjust the shutter speed. So if it's an animal, maybe it'll use a faster shutter speed. I don't know how deep that learning integration goes. But certainly if it's implemented correctly and as they discussed it certainly is to improve your photos, then I think it's a good thing. I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, not everyone wants to put their cameras into manual mode. So to have this sort of artificial intelligence mode that learns and doesn't rely on a data connection as well, fantastic. Really good question as well. Thank you for that question, Danny. Uh, Sumu Nath asks, what is my current daily driver? Well, I keep switching between the Moto Z2 Play and also my iPhone 7 Plus at the moment. I'm waiting for my Pixel 2 to come in. I'm hoping that will be delivered this week. That will then become my daily driver until the Pixel 2 XL comes in. And then that will become my daily driver until the very minimum until January, February next year. Hello again to Darren. Thank you for tuning in again. It seems like, uh, and I don't want to jinx it, it seems like we've got a more robust connection this time around. Uh, Nicholas Lee Trengrouse asks, not has a Huey device, uh, not had a, I assume you're saying not had a Huawei device for a number of years now. The last one I had was awful build quality. Do you have first-hand experience of Huawei devices? Is the build quality up there with the best now? Well, I didn't actually review the Huawei Mate 9, but I did actually handle one briefly, and it felt really robust, really good build quality. And in that last version, I heard a lot of people saying great things about it, especially with regard to the camera and build quality again. Not so sure on the screen quality. I'd have to see one first-hand again. Uh, but certainly heard very, very good things and about the battery life on the previous generation as well. So I possibly think that they've stepped up their game. Danny Johnson also asks, Dave, off topic, but do you have an Apple Watch? Just wondering since you're looking at possibly moving to Android, if you do use an Apple Watch, and if so, have you looked at, into any viable replacement? Okay, breaking news. This is definitely breaking news. Are you sitting down? In my uh, expected switch to Android, I was not using my Apple Watch to its full capability. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you know that I'm a traditional watch guy. So I wear a traditional watch on my left wrist, a mechanical watch. I love my watches. I've got a little collection of my own and I was wearing the Apple Watch on my right wrist. So I was wearing two devices at the same time. I found that the Apple Watch was uh, still notifying me of things that I still had to reach for my smartphone. And thus, in preparation for my Switch, I have gone back to using my Fitbit. This is a Fitbit Charge 2. I was using this before I got the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch sort of replaced it. This does everything I want. 
All I was really using the Apple Watch for was a glorified fitness or activity tracker. This does exactly what I want. It tracks my steps, it tracks my heart rate, it tracks my sleep. Um, so overall activity, which uh, is what I need, that motivation to hit those goals. And this has also got longer battery life than the Apple Watch. I charge it once a week as opposed to once every couple of days. If I was to look for an alternative, I have got a Fossil, I think it's a Fossil Q Founder smartwatch video coming up on the channel very, very soon. Uh, that's an Android Wear watch and I've been very impressed with it. So stay tuned on the channel for that. Uh, Chris Watson, what Android watch? Here we get similar sort of questions. So I think I just answered this. Chris asks, what Android watch would you go for to use with your Pixel 2 XL? Coming from an iPhone and Apple Watch. Well, I think it would be that Fossil one, possibly. There are some other ones due out later in the year, uh, but I'm quite happy with this. I do like the look of the Fitbit Ionic. I really do. I think that looks like a fantastic... Um, uh, not well it is a smart watch but from the fitness tracker company uh, the mate 10 isn't coming to the uk says rusby that is a big big surprise um, i just had a press release come in from my uk pr agency and they shouldn't have sent that to me if it's not coming to the uk so that's quite surprising as far as i know the mate 10 pro is coming mid-november and the Mate 10 is coming late October. Maybe I'm wrong, so I need to update myself on that. Uh, assume you asked, what's the worst smartphone you have reviewed? That is a difficult question. I think it would be my revised review. This is not a cop-out answer. This is my iPhone 7 Plus. And let me just turn the brightness down. So this is my 7 Plus. And I think the worst smartphone review would be this running iOS 11. Seriously, I've had so many problems with it. This is uh, not a good experience running iOS 11. There you go, that was probably my worst smartphone review ever. Uh, Ray Burger asks, is it better than the iPhone 10? Well, with regards to symmetrical design, yes. With regards to UI design, possibly. With regards to user experience, possibly. Uh, I can't really answer your question accurately because I haven't used either and I would need to be fair to you I would need to have had both of them in the studio and review both of them so um, you, you know it, it's, it's one of those questions I can't honestly answer at this stage I'm just not convinced that the iPhone 10 will be a good user experience so I'm just going to double check just to see if I can find the Mate 10 release date, Mate 10 Pro, to see if it is in fact coming to the UK. Because as I say, I was convinced that it was in fact coming to the UK. I'm pretty sure it would be. Uh, they invited lots of UK uh, tech people out there to the announcement so i would assume that it is there's still only euro pricing available for both of the devices so it looks like it's going to at least be available in europe and we are still part of europe in the uk at the moment so i assume it would make its way to the uk as well uh, i'm really not sure uh, danny johnson says we're uh, were you surprised google didn't announce any pixel related watch do they know something we don't is the smartwatch dying or not as popular as companies like Apple make them to be? Very good question again. I think that uh, Google didn't announce a smartwatch. They're either working on something to announce next year uh, or they're going to leave it to third party and really focus their strength in creating a great sort of on-device or on-smartphone experience. I don't think we should read too much in it at the moment. But I do think that smartwatches aren't as popular as people make out. Fitness trackers, for me, are the way to go. I like the fitness trackers. So anyway, let's move on to just discuss some of the highlights for me on these two devices. And there were many. So do sit back, grab a beverage. And let's discuss. So the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro share many of the same sort of features and specifications. So I'm going to cover off the highlights for me. One of the highlights, 
especially with the Mate 10 Pro, was the symmetrical design. I really love the fact that they put a lot of thought into this. Uh, I like the colour selection as well, but the symmetrical design, especially on the back when they drew that line down, it, it sort of made sense. And keeping the top and bottom bezels the same made sense. Keeping a square screen that we're used to. I've got a screen here with square edges, no rounded corners makes sense. It seems like some of these smartphone manufacturers see a trend happening with curved screens, curved corners, edge to edge, and they all jump on board and think that that's now the norm. Well, it might not be what us as the consumer wants. So the squared edges and the normal sort of format screen and something to hold on to when you've got it in landscape mode. I mean, this look, this is the, um, uh, this is, uh, the Moto Z2 Play, bezels top and bottom. So when I'm holding it, I'm not touching the screen. It's a nice experience. I can hold on to it comfortably. So I think they've made the right decision there by not doing a completely bezel-less design. And if they'd have done a notch, it would have been crazy, absolutely crazy. So the first thing I really like is the screen. It looks really very, very good indeed. The second thing is the fingerprint sensor. I mentioned this before, on the back makes it, got it upside down there, but on the back it'll be about here, just under the camera makes so much more sense. I really like the fact they put that on the back. The 4000 milliamp hour battery. I've been saying this for a long time, but a lot of people ask in my reviews, what's the battery life like? This has got a fantastic capacity battery with fast charge. They didn't mention wireless charging, so I'm assuming it doesn't support that. But fast charge via USB-C, that's gonna give you a really good capacity in like 15 to 30 minutes and an all day battery life or two days if you're a light user is absolutely awesome. So they've done really well on their battery technology. They also mentioned how safe their quick charge technology was as well. So I really do like that. And then the other thing which I really do value in a smartphone, both, I mean, in the iPhone 7 Plus, the camera's great. In the Moto Z2 Play, the camera is pretty good as well. I'm yet to do my full review on this, but you will see that soon. The camera is really important to me in a smartphone because I've always got my smartphone with me. So if an opportunity comes up to take a good photo, having a good smartphone really does matter. And we've got a 12 megapixel RGB sensor and a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor f1.6 aperture. That is crazy. That is really very, very good. And Leica optics or Leica lenses. Fantastic. This is going to take some really good photos and I can't wait to test them out for myself. So that's another highlight for me. Uh, the rest of it sort of melted away into the background a bit because it relates to performance, optimization of the software, how well is that gonna work? Yes, you can say you've got a really fast Kirin 970 OxCore processor. Yes, you can say you've got a good GPU. Yes, you can say you've got eight gigabytes of RAM. How does that translate into how the software runs on the smartphone? So all of those things, they've sort of gone to the side for me. They're good, but I need to have the, the smartphone in my hands to be able to ascertain whether it's going to be a really good experience. So let's take a look through your questions again. Um, uh, Russ B says, what about the Honor 7X? I saw that announced the other day. Again, a really good smartphone. I can't remember the specifications. Again, this has only been announced uh, to be available in China, I think, at the moment. Uh, no announcement, as far as I know, with it coming to the UK. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I haven't seen anything about it. But yeah, again, a really nicely specified smartphone with a good price point. The Honor One's coming a little bit lower from the same company, these two, from uh, Huawei Mobile. So... Um, yeah, it, it looks nice. It does. I do agree, Russ. It does look very, very nice. Uh, Russ B says it's Recombu that are reporting that the Mate 10 isn't coming to the UK, but the Mate 10 Pro is. Well, I'm more interested in the Mate 10 Pro anyway, so that's good for me. There's very little difference between the two. Very little difference in size, especially screen size. So there you go. Uh, the Pro version does, in fact, as Race Burger says, has, has less uh, resolution. Um, the Pro version uh, does have the fingerprint sensor on the back as far as I know. I think it was the regular uh, non-Pro version that doesn't have the back uh, located fingerprint sensor. And no micro SD card slot. They name it Pro. Strange naming decision, don't you think? 
Well, maybe I mixed up a little bit on those specifications, but I was convinced there was a micro SD card slot. So let's just have a look through this again. Da -da 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 -da. Because maybe I am wrong. I just don't want to muck up the stream because I've got... Let me go back to my press release email. Let's get you some accurate information. Let's have a look. We've got the press release here. Does this mention the micro SD card slot on both? Micro. It doesn't mention the memory card slot on either of them, so the press release isn't really up to date yet. So I can't give you the definitive answer on if it's got the micro SD card slot or not. Um, Sumu Nas says, what software are you using for the live streaming? I am using Wirecast. Uh, Wirecast sort of plugs directly into the YouTube live broadcast system. Um, I did test OBS and had issues with it stopping the stream properly. I did also test the Elgato software and the Elgato software had this voice sync issue. I am still using the Elgato hardware though. I'm using the Camlink which uh, connects to, to HDMI on one end, USB on the other, into my Mac Pro, and then streaming through the Wirecast software. And then Sultan Ajlan asks a very appropriate question. This is a really good question. Where is your room tour? You have been listening carefully. That, I love that question. Because I'll tell you why I'm smiling so much in a short while. Every year I do both a studio tour and also an editing room tour. This is the editing room I'm in at the moment. This is where I do all my video editing. And this year I decided to do two editing room tours, so version two, purely because quite a lot has changed in the editing room. There's been a lot of upgrades behind the scenes so I can handle my 4K video editing workflow a lot better. Also a new editing machine, which is hidden behind me here, which is why I'm sitting in this position and not moving too much. And the reason I'm smiling so much is because you've asked that question on the very day that I recorded, I haven't edited it yet, but I have recorded the new editing room tour. So I'm gonna be editing that over the next two weeks and then it will appear on the channel. I've got so many other projects going at the moment, I can't get to it before that two week time scale. So it's gonna be roughly two weeks. So let's say it's gonna be during that first week of November, you will get the new editing room tour. So brilliant, brilliant question. Uh, Race Burger says, which color would you choose for the Mate 10? Well, for the Mate 10, the smaller version, I think I would go with either the black version or the mocha brown color. And for the Mate 10 Pro, either the, uh, da, 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 either the titanium gray, but I do quite like the blue, the midnight blue. Very tempted. Did I did I even mention the colours during my introduction? Let's just recap. So the Mate 10 Pro is available in titanium grey, mocha brown, midnight blue and pink gold. And I think I would probably go, I'd probably play it safe and go for the titanium colour. Uh, and the smaller Mate 10 is available in champagne gold, black, pink gold or mocha brown. And I think I would probably... Yeah, I'd probably go for the mocha brown in that smaller version because it's a little bit different. Uh, Darren Gator asks, is that scotch in those brown tubes behind you? You're referring to these tubes up here on the shelf. In fact, that is some scarves. They are Burberry scarves. Uh, I've featured those on the Luxury Lifestyle channel. Unfortunately, they are not full of scarves. They're just the tubes. <laughs> And for some reason I've kept them there. I have been rearranging the shelf behind me though and in place of that very very soon are going to be some more of these Funko Pop figures. I really do like my Funko Pops. Absolutely love it. I'll show you my favourite one at the moment. Uh, let's reach up there. This is my favourite one at the moment. Let me show you this. And you can probably guess why it's my favourite. Because it is Tourist Dave. From Despicable Me 3. Love the film and I, I just really like this. That's one of my favourites. That's one of the most uh, sort of recent acquisitions. 
So great question. Uh, Darren Bird says pricing is premium. It's getting up there to premium. Uh, the Honor range of smartphones is a lot cheaper. Uh, this particular range, the uh, Mate 10 Pro, have always been their flagship devices, so thus you're paying a little bit more for them. And yet they're coming up to 699, 799, but still not quite up to iPhone prices, still not quite up to that price of the Note 10, and definitely not up to the price of the iPhone 10. Sorry, the Note 8, I mean, uh, and not up to the price of the iPhone 10 either. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing that with a lot of uh, smartphone manufacturers this year. That they are indeed increasing their prices across their range uh, which is quite surprising I'm, I'm quite surprised at that but anyway so my opinion yeah the Porsche design 1399 Darren Bird says would you consider an import phone yes I would most definitely if the price was good uh, Nicholas uh, Lee Trengrouse says if you like pop figures check out the figures from kid robot i've seen those before now that you've reminded me one of the first things i do when i finish this live broadcast is i'm going to go onto amazon and have a look um, in fact i'm going to put the put the page up now so it reminds me why did you say that now i'm going to be buying some kid robots <laughs> oh my goodness Addicted to uh, these little uh, little figurines. It's so so funny and do do I still have my key or chi uh, Figures from Domo from Darren Gator. Yes, I do still have them somewhere um, I took a lot of photos of those before you've been following me for a long time uh, Darren and yes, I do still have them. I'm looking around to see if I can see any but I can't see any at the moment um, John Decker says check in check out the Huawei Mate 10 Porsche design. I'm getting that one that is a great, great choice. Uh, Danny Johnson says, what do you think about phones starting to reach $1,000 or more? It is crazy. It makes it unattainable for a lot of people, which is a shame. It makes it unattainable for me, who wants to cover these devices on the uh, Geek and Noise channel, thus right why I set up the GoFundMe campaign. It makes it very, very hard for people to actually afford these devices. And I must say, that it's not always necessary. This is a good example. The Motorola, or Moto I should say, Z2 Play, £379. So round about $469. And it's a really good experience. It's a very, very good experience indeed. But some people want a premium device and thus they will pay for it. And why not if you can afford it and that's your one treat for the year, and like me, I use my smartphone every single day. This gets so, so much use. More use than my computer. More use than my camera and my microphones and my hard drives. This gets the most use out of all of the technology that I actually use uh, and, and actually own. So if, if that's what you're going to spend your money on and it's going to be something that you use for pretty much everything, then um, you can be a little bit extravagant sometime. If you can afford it, then go for it. A uh, little bit off topic, but Raceburger says, do I play FIFA 18? No, I don't. I play very occasional gaming, more of a casual gamer, social gamer on smartphones, etc. Uh, Sumu says, my S8 Plus cost around $1,050. So yet another expensive uh, smartphone. And one last comment from John Decker says that Porsche Design or Porsche Design uh, has 256 gigabytes capacity. Yep, that is one of the differentiators between that model and the other model smartphones. So anyway, I think we are going to end the stream here. Uh, in closing, I will just mention the GoFundMe campaign and a few more highlights again. I have got a GoFundMe campaign running. It's on my screen behind me here. It's sort of like uh, an opportunity for you to show your support to the Geek and Noise channel and also to have your say. I'm trying to decide between either covering the Note 8 or the iPhone 10. If you can make a contribution, it's entirely optional, then please do. Uh, and you will also get a shout out in either the Note 8 or the iPhone 10 video. So I'll give you something a little bit back as well. Uh, and in closing, I just want to say that I'm really impressed with what Huawei have done. The presentation was good. They highlighted a lot of features there. I love the AI learning. I love the fact that they've given us really good Leica optics. 
uh, the Leica Q camera, like the compact camera with the fixed lens, one of the best experiences I had. Now I know it's not going to take pictures or photos quite as good as a, a £3,000 camera, but having Leica Optics on there and their partnership is a big, big deal. Having the f1.6 aperture and the dual sensors and the dual image processors should give a really good photo experience. And if the fit and finish is anything like the previous generation and that all day battery life, they've conjured up a really good mix of specifications. I can't wait to see how they've implemented the software. If that's a really good experience, it's the EMUI version 8 experience. If that's good as well, then wow, we are in for a real treat. And yes, the prices have gone up a bit. Yes, it is an expensive ask. It is a flagship phone, but it's cheaper than the competition. So, and Huawei look like they're going to be overtaking many more manufacturers. They might be in the number one spot of uh, smartphone manufacturers. Wouldn't that be cool? So we take a couple more questions. Um, Nicholas Lee Trengrouse says, I find the Xiaomi devices are comparable in specification to some of these £700 plus devices at sometimes a third of the price. Yeah, I've seen very good things about them. Uh, I don't think I've reviewed one yet, but certainly they do look good on paper and I have seen good reviews. Um, any comment on Richard's English though? Not sure what you're referring to, the, to there, Raceburger. Uh... Darren Gator says, how is Milo doing? Have not seen him in a while. Milo is my Shih Tzu, and he is doing absolutely fine. He's eating a lot better because he's very, very fussy eater, but he's doing absolutely fine. Bundle of joy, a fluffy bundle of joy. What a way to end the stream. Anyway, that is it for this live broadcast. Thank you very much for posing your questions and for tuning in to hear my opinion on the new Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro from Huawei. Uh, again, I hope to bring you reviews of both of those products on the channel. I have reached out to the company, so hopefully I will get loan units in. Hopefully I will be able to bring you my hands-on experience with them. So do stay tuned to the Geek Noise channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch the video, and I'll see you again soon in another one. Bye for now.